What is the crack lads? Welcome back to another tactical video. So I've been getting a lot of questions lately from people. There's a lot of newcomers downloading and trying the game out. So welcome to eFootball 2023. Hopefully these videos can help you a little bit. I'm in by no means the best player in the world. I'm not a top 10 player. Um, I don't really, you know, like strive to be winning every single game. But what I like to set out to do is enjoy my gameplay, play the game the way I want to play it, and if you know, live live with the results then. Um so obviously look, there is one, you know, there's one or two things that always work. There's always a meta in the game. Like no matter what game you play, whether it's Call of Duty using the meta guns, whether it's NBA 2K using the special players, whether it's FIFA, whether it's PES, whether it's eFootball using the formations, the tech the tactics and you know the style of play that you need to play if you want to be dominating, get into division one and being able to dominate games. It's a different it's a different type of play style. It's a different type of skill. If you guys are just looking to improve, I'm hoping that this video can actually help you guys along. So we are going to be taking a look in this video series. We're going to do five videos and we're going to be making our way to working through every team play style. How to set your team up, what players you should be playing, manually dragging the players into certain positions, why I'm dragging them into certain positions. We're going to start with possession game, which is this video. And then we're going to do quick counter, which is the meta, long ball counter, which is also the meta at the moment. And then we're going to cover out wide and long ball. I, I play out wide because I am a possession based out wide player that is very dribble centric. That's what I enjoy. Win, lose or draw. That's how I like to play my football games. I like getting the ball out wide, touching goals, um, intricate little passes, like over the tops, taking on players with dribbles, with skills, cut-ins and finesse shots, all that sort of stuff. That's just what I enjoy. It's not really the meta. It isn't really rewarded compared to some formations and tactics that maybe the top 500 players in the world are going to be using. Um, but it's certainly something that I enjoy playing. So we are going to be taking a look at this possession game play, play style here at the moment. And we're going to cover uh, how I think you guys should be setting your team up. If you are looking to play possession based gameplay, I get a lot of questions on this. We are going to show you a couple of little uh, little kind of things as well to, to kind of help you out. So firstly, right, obviously we're not going to go into managers and stuff. We're using Ten Hag here. Um, I don't have all the players leveled up or trained up with Ten Hag because he's not my manager that I use. I'm just showing you guys this as an example. So we only have 89 team strength. You obviously do want that to be your play style proficiency with the players and the manager. You do want that to be 100 or at least maybe 96 over uh, because you get the obvious, obviously the overall stat boosts in. But yeah, with this squad here, this is kind of option one, right? So we have three options. This is kind of the option one. I play a very similar formation to this, except I play out wide. But if you are playing possession, right, it kind of tells you, if you go into team play style, it will tell you exactly what the AI uh, react like and how they actually control when you are playing with this team play style. So players maintain tight positioning when attacking to maximize the effectiveness of short passes. They will also generally avoid dashing into spaces behind the opposition defense. So you're not going to be really like, like touching goal with this formation. This is more for somebody that wants to slow the pace down. If you are a possession-based player, you want to fill your teams with players that are able to be comfortable on the ball, that have very high ball control, tight possession, and good passing stats, at least over 84, 85 on any of those stats, right? We've littered our team with them here. Even our center backs are kind of ball playing center backs, which we'll get into in a second. And then obviously when defending, it says the player movement is to keep a high defensive line to put pressure on the opponent from the front line. So this is with possession game. Obviously you were going to push forward a little bit more. Similarly to how kind of, uh, you know, like Barcelona would play back in the day when it was all possession based, where you're controlling the rhythm of the game, you're controlling the pace of the game, you're controlling when the team can counter attack. Um, look, you're going to concede goals. There's no surefire way. Like the top one player in the world at the moment is Cam's. He's an ex-professional or he's a current professional player, I should say. Sorry, but he's an ex-co-op champ. He's one of the best players in the world. He's still going to concede goals, man. You're still going to concede goals in this game because there's a lot of different factors between ping, responsiveness of the players, server, connection between you and your opponent. You know, just getting on bad luck, you know what I mean? And getting screwed over by the game. You're, you're going to concede goals, right? But what you can do, and I think if you want to improve as a player, 
is to actually be able to control the game and learn how to control the game that you are conceding when you make a mistake rather conceding than just being like at sixes and sevens at the back and then last but not least we have have after gaining possession the team this team looks to retain possession for as long as possible by providing close control to the players on the ball so you can see the little squares there it's it's not a triangle it's more like a kind of a square where you've got four options five options at all times and you can also spread it out wide depending on the formation that you play last but not least what happens with this possession game play style when you lose possession well it says here after losing possession players closest to the ball quickly move to put pressure on the ball holder so for example you lose the ball with Dembele on the right wing Dembele is going to try and get back into position if he's closest to the ball if Modric is closest to the ball he'll go at it if Kimmich is closest to the ball he'll go at it or else a mixture of both and then obviously you have your own manual input as well right so that is kind of how the game defines possession game play style right now how i would define it right is you can do a lot of stuff that you can use and mix and match different tactics and stuff like that if you find that you are a possession based player i think you'll know fairly straight uh, away when you play the game if you are a possession based player if you take longer than two seconds on the ball rather than first time one touch passes all the way up the pitch um if you have a mixture of attack and uh kind of like you know probe and passes you go out wide you go out left you go out right you go central you do one touch passing you do triangles you do four man press uh when you don't have the ball you do four man press when you do have the ball where you're bringing different players into it you're doing switches you're doing beckham pirlo-esque kind of like switches from right full to left wing left back to right wing uh and all that sort of stuff if it's a mixture of things like there's some people that will go out and play match after match after match after match where they will literally have three center forwards have three center backs and then have the bank in the middle that will be super central we'll get into that in a future video and they will literally just pass the ball one touch pass the whole way up the pitch literally won't even take one second on the ball won't take one dribble on the ball it's touch and go touch and go touch and go touch and go and then swarm you when they lose possession and just overwhelm you really that's that's kind of how a lot of the good players are able to dominate um but with this right we have put obviously we have got carlos left back we've got ruben diaz and Salaba. and you look at these guys stats right if you are playing possession you need to have guys that are able to pass the ball so you can see here that diaz has got 71 pass low pass and 74 uh, lofted passes tight possession of ball control aren't that bad 69 and 64 Saliba is very similar he's more of a ball playing guy he's got build-up player card as well whereas Ruben Diaz has got the destroyer Kimmich then as well even though he's a uh, right back here and he's 96 overall he's got insane passing ability for a right back one of the best in the game he's also got the engine to do it and again we've also got Roberto Carlos who is very comfortable in control of the ball and in tight possession he's also got the speed and acceleration to back up any frailties he does have on the ball right we go into this midfield with Makalele. Makalele again comfortable in possession his low passing is fine just to keep things ticking over but our passing is going to mainly come from Modric who's 93 and 88 and ball control is insane and for somebody like Mason Mount, who is very underrated in the game, he's got really solid stats as well. And then obviously on the wings, we are just going to be using these as outlets all the time. So whenever we get in a bit of difficulty or whenever we get in a bit of trouble and we're going to be caught in possession, we're going to be spraying the ball out to our wingers. It doesn't really matter who you have wings on the wings once they have pace once they have speed and once they're able to beat a man you need to be a good dribbler if you are going to play in possession that's i can't reiterate that enough and that's why we've packed our team here with neymar and dembele both very comfortable on the ball passing the ball dribbling the ball and doing tricks and then like as i said you can mix and match here right so you could put if you want to have more control you could put Sergio Busquets in here, who again is going to be a really, really guy, a guy that's going to be really comfortable on the ball, really good passer. You could slot him in there. And you could even go as far as having somebody like De Jong or Messi in here. Like if we put De Jong in here as an AMF, he's going to have fairly high stats as well, where he's very comfortable with the ball when he gets that ball. The main issue, I think, with this formation for this like model, as as you say is the center forward position because you need to be able to like bring possession into the center forward and you do need an all-rounder so we have got son here if we go over to efootballdb.com we have got three options right so you take a look at son here 
Son has got ball control, dribbling, tight possession, finishing 89, but he's lacking in header, right? His speed and acceleration are really, really good. He'll be able to lead the line for you, but you won't be able to cross the ball into him. Same with somebody like a legend, like Eto, Torres, Rumenegi, any of those boys, finishing 88, header is a little bit better, speed, acceleration, dribbling, all perfect. On the flip side, then you have Lewandowski, who is going to be 90 finishing, 86 header, but then he doesn't have the speed or the dribbling to back it up. So you have to be very careful as to what player you have in there, right? You can mix and match whoever that you want there, but your main thing is you are going to be getting the ball out wide and playing it to your AMF through the middle, and then obviously having this as your three main guys on the left or the right, and then you're going to be swinging crosses in, right? If we want to switch things up a bit, we also has, have the sub-tactic that if you go down a goal, you kind of switch to this, where you're bringing Kimmich into a central role, you're leaving Carlos Diaz and Salab as a back three, obviously you're going to be a bit uh, light back there, but you're pushing everything forward and going a little bit more adventurous. Now in terms of actual um, individual instructions, what we usually do, and what I would per, per, or, uh, suggest to do with this one, is to have defensive on Carlos, and then I would also have a counter-target on your striker, which is Sun, and then it's up to you whether you want to have defensive also on uh, Sergio Busquets, and that'll just literally root him in position. Designated players will refrain from pushing forward in attack. So unless you manually trigger Busquets or Carlos to run forward, they will stay back more often than not. Now, Carlos lets his mind of his own. He does what he wants. He, he won't stay back even if you pay him. So um, that is an issue with Carlos's card, but I think he is, he is probably the best left back in the game. Now, we do have one more, right, just to go through this really quick. If you guys are kind of thinking, okay, I'm a bit light up front, I need a little bit more firepower up front, you can go this formation as well, which is instead of a 4-2-3-1, which we just looked at, this is a 4-1-3-2. So we're going to take a look at this, right? This is kind of, I won't say it's meta, but this is kind of something that a lot of people will go to if they are looking to control a game and they play a possession game uh, play style, right? So you could do a lot of quick switches here if you want to change your team. Now I'm going to show you kind of what is meta as well towards the end of this video because uh, it is going to be a fairly long video, maybe in a couple of minutes. But what we have here is pretty much the, an identical team. We've got everything identical except that Bele is out for Jao Cancelo. The reason for this is because we're playing uh, left and right midfielders. We don't really want to be attacking so much like if you are playing this formation you will be looking to play with this triangle here so you could still play a wing you can still play a wing play but you've got the extra cover with Cancelo who can play left or right obviously and then obviously you can play Neymar wherever you want to play Neymar Neymar is a left mid if he's 95 overall but you can actually go even more defensive there if you wanted to like you could play Frankie de Jong or Modric or somebody not Modric Pedri like somebody like that that you could play in there that's more defensive if you wanted to do that. You could also play Carlos there. If you wanted to throw Carlos in there and you wanted to put on another CB, you could do that. Like you could put Maldini in there and you could just literally switch him to a centre back. And a lot of people will play three centre backs at the back. So that is another option that you have there if you want to play more central while still playing possession. And then on top of that then as well, you have your individual instructions. We've defensive on Carlos, we've defensive on Makalele, and we've our counter target on Messi because we want Messi to stay up there as an SS. So that is two things now, lads. I think, look, at the end of the day, right, as I keep repeating, and especially to newcomers, you're going to concede goals. There's going to be mistakes that happen that you can't control. And every player is different. Like somebody that's in a top 50 player in the world, right? One of the best players in the world and the professional guys that will be able to dominate with any formation, with any players, literally can just play with anything because they're so good at the game, right? It's it just, that goes without saying. A lot of it is control is controlled by what you do on the sticks. You can set your team up perfectly and a top 10 in the world player can set their team up perfectly and they will still dominate. You know what I mean? Because there's only so much the tactics and formations will control it's similar to the responsiveness and the connection between you and your opponent if you have a bad connection anything can happen but i do think that you can set your team up limit mistakes limit stuff that happens that you can't control and try and control games man and play the way you want to play so that is what i would say obviously you also have the traditional then as well as what i would call it the traditional setup which is a 4 3 3 very traditional. This is a sub tactic that I'm using just to show you guys. So obviously Carlos wouldn't be there. And that is just because we've moved Carlos into that position and brought Maldini on. 
Uh, but you would have Carlos as a as a kind of a left mid there, and then you would have your two two wingers there, and you would push up your your man there, say Modric or whoever it is going to be, and then you would have your obviously Neymar would be in there. You'd be switching Neymar or you'd be switching Maldini, depending on which you wanted to do. You could put Maldini back there, um, or Carlos back there, bring on Neymar. So. Yeah, that is it, lads. You need to pay heed of like what players you're using, what style of play suits you, how you actually play. If you're a very quick-based, uh, responsive-based player, don't play possession or don't play out wide. That would be my recommendation to you guys. Uh, if you are a possession-based player, this is a formation that you guys could use and the players that you could use. Pack your team with good passers, good guys in possession, one-touch pass for player skills and all that sort of stuff. Um... But yeah, that is it for me, lads. It's a bit longer of a video than I predicted it would be. But yeah, that is kind of the meta at the moment is packing your team up here. The meta at the moment has always been kind of, you know, what the pro guys are using is packing your team like this. So you've got your three there and then you've got your cover at the back. That's basically what it is. So you've got three strikers up there that you're interlinking and they're your main focus of attack. And then you can manually attack with your wing or your right or left back if you want to. You've still got your block of four here and you've got Modric to link everything. So that is the meta. But if you want to play out wide and you want to play possession-based gameplay, I think this could do you uh, very well, especially if you are a newcomer. And it gets you to, it kind of gets you to grips with the new system and stuff like that, that you're able to control games. Because there's not more frustrating than coming up against a guy that is looking to control the pace, that he's deciding when you get the ball from a counter-attack. He's deciding what happens when you get a chance on goal if he pushes forward. So... Yeah, that is it for me, lads. I'll be talking to you later. We'll have another video up quite soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.